Today, we're going to focus on one of the most bizarre mysteries coming out of the observations from the James Webb Space Telescope. Something that the James Webb unveiled in the early universe, and something that just looks like this. Tiny red dots, which is why these objects are still referred to as little red dots even today. But the thing is, these are not just pretty pictures. The discovery of these objects kind of challenges modern cosmological models, and specifically challenges our understanding of how black holes and galaxies seem to evolve. And since hundreds of such objects have been discovered in just the last few years, this has now become one of the biggest mysteries in cosmology that currently just does not have a very good explanation. Because in essence we have these very compact and very bright objects that seem to have existed anywhere from a few hundred million to possibly billion years following the Big Bang. And at the moment nobody knows what these are and how exactly they were created. But we obviously know some things. For example, we know that these are really compact, usually no larger than 500 light years across with quite a few of them much smaller at approximately 150 light years. This would make it much smaller than even the smallest dwarf galaxies, and obviously much smaller than the Milky Way, which is roughly 100,000 light years across. So this is less than 2% the size of our own galaxy. And the majority of these objects have been found when the universe was only about 600 million years old. So essentially when we do expect galaxies to form, except that in this case they look nothing like what we would expect a typical early galaxy to look like. But it's really the light coming from them that creates the biggest mystery. Their light seems to form a very peculiar V-shaped pattern, because in this case they seem to appear blue in the ultraviolet light, but also distinctly red in the optical light. And they also show a very broad Balmer emission line, which is usually formed by hydrogen gas and specifically associated with very high energy activity. And so, in this video, we're essentially going to discuss one of the new studies focusing on one of the most famous such objects that provides us with another potential explanation that in this case might kind of make sense. But before we talk about this new study, let's discuss some of the previous propositions and explanations that also kind of make sense, but don't explain everything yet. And as always, you can find all of the relevant studies in the description below. And so let's start with the main explanation and the leading idea. What if these are active galactic nuclei or AGNs? Or basically objects powered by rapidly growing supermassive black holes in the center of some kind of a cluster. In the center of some kind of a young galaxy that's actively feeding this black hole. And so could these just be massive black holes? Well, there's definitely some evidence. For example, the previously mentioned Balmer lines. Just the fact that these Balmer lines are kind of broad suggests that the gas in this case seems to be swirling really fast around some kind of a center and very likely moving at thousands of kilometers per second. And this is actually what we do expect from some kind of a massive black hole actively feeding on a lot of gas. And so in this case, the red color could be explained by some kind of a thick cloud of gas surrounding the black hole's feeding frenzy and also obviously blocking some of the light, making it appear much redder. This was actually the first explanation proposed a few years back, but it seems to have certain problems. And that's because in a typical EGN, we expect a lot of X-ray emissions and also a lot of flickering, or basically changes in luminosity. Yet these objects produce no X-rays, and they also seem to have an extremely flat emission, mostly visible in the infrared spectrum, implying that they are not variable in brightness at all. Behavior that's kind of unexpected from a typical supermassive black hole. Plus, if every little red dot were an AGN, it would actually mean that there were far more supermassive black holes growing in the early universe compared to any model we have. And it would actually create a mystery of, so what happened to all of them and why don't we see more of them around us? And so statistical analysis suggested that a simpler non-black hole based model would probably make much more sense. Okay, what if these are not black holes, but instead very compact star systems, or essentially kind of like early globular clusters. Something that's present in a lot of galaxies in the modern universe, but the object whose origin is still unclear, as we don't actually know how these formed. And so perhaps the red color in this case just came from a population of very old evolved stars, which would obviously not be variable in terms of brightness and would not produce X-rays. But again, there's a bit of a problem. To explain the overall brightness of these objects and their overall compactness using just stars, we would need an impossibly high density of stars in a very small region of space, far beyond anything we observe even in the densest parts of the galaxies today. 
Essentially here you would need stars just a few astronomical units away from one another in a region of about 100 to 150 light years. And that also doesn't really make sense because they would very likely just collide with each other, very likely resulting in supernova and producing all sorts of additional emissions. Then, more recently, in May of 2025, an alternative hypothesis suggested that maybe these are basically TDEs, tidal disruption events. That's of course when a star comes really close to a black hole and starts to fall apart, producing massive emissions. And so this idea suggests that little red dots might be intermediate mass black holes in the middle of super dense clusters, such as once again maybe blue girl clusters, actively tearing apart unlucky stars one after another. And since TDEs are known to be relatively faint in X-rays and can also produce broad hydrogen lines, some of the observations here do actually match. But the main challenge here is that it doesn't actually explain the red color. In other words, the actual emission in this case would not make much sense. Moreover, to confirm this, we would have to observe this for several years just to see slight variations. But at the moment, all of these objects seem to be more or less pretty much the same. They don't seem to produce additional emissions and variability expected from TDEs. Likewise, in July of 2025, additional propositions suggested that maybe these are just supermassive primordial stars, kind of like the elusive population 3 stars that we always thought existed in the early universe but that have not been seen yet. And these would essentially be the first stars ever made containing only hydrogen and helium and in theory could be quite giant, thousands or even million times the solar mass. And so here certain theories or certain propositions match the observations from little red dots at least to some extent, specifically matching the spectra and the brightness, including the V-shaped Balmer break. As a matter of fact, this could even be possible seeds for later supermassive black holes once these stars collapse. But here this proposition is still somewhat hypothetical, mostly because population 3 stars are technically expected to be much smaller than this, and are also expected to produce mostly blue color, as these would be very massive and resemble giant wolf Rhea stars and not these compact red objects. And so here we have several competing ideas, with more coming out pretty much every month now, but the puzzle of these little red dots remains largely unsolved. But now we have a new study from September of 2025 that proposes something else and is maybe able to explain a lot more than any of the propositions I just mentioned. And so in this new study, Anna de Graaff and the team you see here focused on one of the most well-known little red dots discovered three years ago. This is known as the cliff. A particularly extreme little red dot that's been examined several times already and whose light took approximately 11.9 billion years to reach us. But what makes this object interesting is that it has an extremely sharp prominent Balmer break and a very sudden drop in brightness at certain ultraviolet wavelengths, with the break in this case much steeper and more extreme than what you would usually expect from typical star-forming galaxies. And a lot of previous explanations based on a lot of other studies could not actually explain why it has this and why it contains so many extreme features. It even looked more like some kind of a spectrum of a single extremely hot star than an entire galaxy. And so this led this team to propose a new phenomenon, a new model referred to as a black hole star, or BH star for short. But this is not a star in the traditional sense, as it does not get its energy from nuclear fusion. Instead, it is a supermassive black hole at the center of an accretion disk, but unlike anything we've seen before. It seems to be completely cocooned within a thick, turbulent envelope of cold hydrogen gas, with the black hole's powerful activity hitting the surrounding gas so much that it then creates a kind of a fluorescent glow, a glow that's then visible from billions of light years away. And because it's cold gas that dominates the light we see, it predominantly emits in the red optical and near-infrared wavelengths and not X-rays expected from black hole emissions. And it's this dense cocoon of gas that seems to perfectly explain the peculiar V-shaped Balmer emissions and the extreme Balmer breaks coming from this object. And so in essence all of the emission lines could in theory be explained if this was a cocoon of gas. As a matter of fact here some of the emission lines also show us the absorption lines from the gas itself. And so we know that this definitely contains huge amounts of hydrogen. And crucially, this very thick, cold gas cocoon possibly also explains other puzzling characteristics. For example, the lack of X-rays. In this case, because the gas is so thick, it blocks the X-rays, preventing them from escaping. 
It also accounts for the flat infrared spectrum and could explain why these objects appear overmassive, as their black holes seem to be a little bit too large for their host galaxies, because much of the galaxy's actual stellar mass might be hidden or simply very small. And this explanation seems to fit other explanations from some of the previous studies and observations from other objects. For example, the object you see right here known as QSO1, a distant little red dot at a redshift of 7 that was found to host a massive central point mass, roughly around 50 million times the solar mass. But also an object that would unlikely to contain any stellar components or any active stars. And though initially this was described to be a naked black hole, very likely in the early accretion phase, the observations of emissions do actually align more with this black hole star hypothesis quite well. And so here we have this new concept of a dominant black hole within some kind of a gas envelope with certain other little red dots even showing the high excitation iron emission lines, which would suggest extremely dense gas and very high temperatures near some kind of a central source, exactly what you would expect from a powerful EGN hitting a very dense gas envelope. But what's even more exciting about this black hole star hypothesis is the implication for the idea of black hole growth. Because here, for years, scientists struggled to explain how black holes could grow so fast so quickly in order to acquire billions of solar masses in certain galaxies near us. And so here these black hole stars could represent crucial early phases in the black hole evolution, where the black hole forms rapidly by consuming huge amounts of coal gas very quickly, and actually growing faster than theoretical maximum limit or previous assumptions based on previous models. And so the current thinking and the current explanation for these little red dots seems to suggest that these are black holes after all, and very likely first black hole activity in some kind of a young galaxy with the black hole that forms eventually becoming covered in the cocoon of gas and then rapidly growing for what seems to be hundreds of millions of years. But eventually this fog will disappear and the object evolves into something more typical such as a quasar or a blazer that we usually detect at least a billion years after this. And so this black hole star explanation right now seems to explain most of the emissions and most of the observations. But since this is a continuous journey, this is still a very early proposition and so only further observations and further analysis can tell us for sure what's going on here. Although intriguingly, even after three years, this is still just as mysterious as it ever was. And so these little red dots or these unusual cosmic rubies in the early universe, once explained, will probably provide us with new understanding of the cosmological principles and the ideas behind black hole and galactic evolution. But at least for now, despite this being a really good explanation, it is still just a hypothesis. And so until future explanations, that's pretty much all we know. You can find some of the previous videos on a similar topic in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support the channel on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads, and can DM me directly, or by joining a channel membership that grants you early access and a few secret videos. Alternatively, you can also buy the Wonderful Person t-shirt that features James Webb Space Telescope as one of the designs. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.